Hey guys, so for the past few weeks, I have found myself preparing several of my students for various types of auditions. And I wanted to make a video to share some of my thoughts about auditions that I don't think I've shared before. The first point is that there comes a certain point before the audition where you should not actually practice as ferociously as maybe you were about a month or so before. Sounds kind of counterintuitive. You would think that you would be working really hard up until the audition so that you would be at your top-notch playing ability by the time you're at the audition. But what I found is that that tends to burn you out. And by the time you get to the audition, you're actually just like too tired to actually play to your full capabilities. So by the time you get to about two weeks before the audition, basically the way you are playing at that time is going to be pretty darn close to how you will play at the audition. Starting two weeks prior to the audition is a great time to just start doing run-throughs and getting used to how it feels to just play right through all of your excerpts and your pieces in a row. It helps normalize the feeling of just kind of running through them. The idea being that when you get to the actual audition, you don't feel like you don't have time to go back and correct your mistakes. You're just used to running through them. It's normal. And whatever your body and your brain perceives as normal, it perceives as easy. By the time you get to the point where you're playing in the audition, everything should feel like you're not trying. It's when something feels out of the norm, that's when it feels really difficult. And you don't wanna feel that when you're at an audition. After the audition is when you can start learning new things again. So I have actually prevented myself from teaching new embouchures or new techniques to my students if I'm preparing them for an audition. Side note, I have been helping some students in the summer prior to them entering music school. I would refrain from doing embouchure changes or too crazy of posture changes right before they enter music school because it's typical for the professor to change those two things right when they start music school. So what I've been doing instead is prepping my students mentally for this huge change when they enter music school. But I tell them that, you know, hey, because I'm only your summer teacher, I'm not going to go into that. But I do notice that you probably will have to when you get your new professor. In a similar way, you shouldn't do any kind of crazy posture or crazy embouchure changes at least two weeks before an audition. Lay low, have everything just stay the same. Now that doesn't mean that as a teacher, you can't verbalize that you would like to start changing some things after the audition. That gives your students something to look forward to. It also helps them feel like it's not wrong for them to just kind of keep playing that the way that they are. Like if you think back to your own journey as a student, you'll know that you have done exams, you've done juries, you've done performances at a level of playing that is not at the level that you are at now, but the performances and the exams and the juries still went okay, you know? Like you're not gonna die. In fact, you learn things from it, you get better from the experience. Just because they're not performing at the level that you want them to, does not mean that they're not going to do well. You can always save drastic changes to address after the audition, but it doesn't mean that you can't bring it up. The second thing is to think about what type of audition you're doing. Are you looking at an educational type of audition or are you looking at a competitive type of audition. You approach those two auditions very differently. For an educational type of audition, which I say is something like placements in school band, placements in university orchestra, anything where you're not in a professional level, I see that more as sort of educational audition. For an educational audition, they're not really looking for the best, the cream of the crop, they're looking at your potential. So what you should be doing is demonstrating whether or not you can follow directions. Do you seem willing to try different things? Are you flexible? That's why you'll always see things like have contrasting excerpts. They want to hear something fast. They want to hear something slow and lyrical. They want to see what 
you potentially can do? Do you sound like someone that they can mold? A lot of times in educational auditions, they will actually ask you to play something that you've been playing in a different way. They might just randomly ask you for a bit of the second movement or a bit of the third movement, even though officially you were only preparing the first movement. Are you a go-getter? Are you eager enough to also have the second and third movement prepared? They're not looking at an end product. Are you moldable? Are you someone that they can teach? A competitive audition is very different because they are now looking at an end result. Does this person match our sound? In the current state that they're in, can we picture this person playing with us. It's not just based on how well you can play the excerpts. They're actually also looking at your tone color. They're looking at your style of playing. It is really like interviewing for a job. Can you contribute to the team? They're not looking to mold you. They're looking to see what you can provide them. Educational is more if they were to provide you things could you grow from that? Now the third issue that I've brought up with my students is how we see control. How much can you control in an audition situation? The truth is you can't really control it. The only thing that you can control is how much you practice, how much you worked on something, and how prepared you are. That's it. So when you go into an audition situation you want to think about what is your responsibility versus what is the responsibility of the adjudicators? Your responsibility is that you have to have the excerpts prepared that are on the audition list. You need to think about what that preparation entails. Again, thinking about whether or not it's an educational type of audition or if it's a competitive audition. Prepare accordingly. After you've prepared that stuff, you can't really control one, who you're up against, and two, what the adjudicators think of you. Even if you play really well, let's say in a competitive audition, your tone color just does not match the existing group. At that point, it doesn't matter how good you are, they are not going to accept you. That is not your problem per se. It's also not their problem either. It's just that it doesn't match. You can be a great flutist, but if you don't fit their team, you don't fit their team. I have heard of several situations where, you know, someone plays very well, they don't fit the team. They play with the team anyway. And in the end, they end up quitting. If you cannot work with the team, you are going to have conflict. In the end, it's not going to work out. Is it a really bad thing if you're not chosen? Does it reflect on how good of a flute player you are? If you did your part to prepare well, then no, it is not a reflection on you. So because you can't control what the adjudicators think and do because it is not your responsibility, your only responsibility is to come prepared. If you can't control them, you also can't control the people that you're up against, then really is the ball in your own court. Do not put responsibility on yourself to win something if it's not even your responsibility in the first place. They're the ones that make the decision not you. I'm always hearing people say, I need to win this. I need to get first chair. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to win. I need to win. And I'm here thinking to myself, you can't control that anyway. Why are you putting that burden on your shoulders? That is not a burden for you to carry. That burden is for your adjudicators. That is not your cross to bear. Whether or not you win, is not actually your responsibility. Your responsibility is to come in prepared. Don't take a ball that is not supposed to belong in your court. Throw the ball back into the adjudicator's court. You just go in, do your thing, this is me, take it or leave it. That's what you can control. That is your responsibility, nothing else. I love you guys very much and I'll see you guys next week.